Hello and welcome to lecture 29 of the class from data to decisions. I'm Chris Mack, the instructor for your course, and here we're going to use R to do a weighted linear. Turns out it's extraordinarily simple to do. Do you know how to do a regular regression in R? At least squares regression? Add some weights and do a weighted regression it is extremely easy. I'll show you. Uh, let's start with a very simple data set that I made up right here. So we'll begin with the x values. They're just integers from 1 to 5. And here are the y data points, 1.1, 2.5, etc. I'm using the concatenate function c to create an array of those values. What's different about an ordinary least squares regression is we compared to a weighted regression is with a weighted regression, we now have to add weights, one for every data point. If you weighted everything equally, then you'd have just an ordinary least squares regression. But when you weight things differently, then you get different results. The most common weighting is to assess the variance of each data point and then make the weight equal to one over the variance. Here I've created an array uh, and stuck it into a variable I called SD that represents the standard deviation of each point. So Again, I made this data up, but the standard deviation of, of the first data point is 0.3, the next two are 0.2, the fourth data point is 0.1, and the last data point is 0.5. Now, when I square those to get the variance and do one over them, you can see that the fourth data point will be weighted very heavily, and the fifth data point will be weighted very lightly. And that's going to have a big impact on the regression, as we'll see. All right, so... We'll look at the use of those that data in a normal regression. LM of y is a function of x. Um, just a plain old regression. Down here in the results, we get an intercept and a, and a slope, standard errors, etc. Everything's just fine. How would we perform weighted regression? We have to simply add one little item into our LM function, weights equal. I've named the weights, A of weights, one for every data point, W. So I simply put weights equal W inside the LM function, and that's all there is to it. That's all I have to do. So when I execute this model with the weights, I get a different intercept and a different standard deviation. Maybe the best way to see it is by uh, plotting them. So I'm going to come down here and run this plotting. And here I've plotted data. That's the first thing I did. And I plotted two lines, one for the prediction based on the original model, model zero, the one without the weights, and one for a prediction uh, x versus the predicted values for the weighted model. I gave them different colors, and I put a legend up here. So this function legend, if you've never seen that before, legend on a graph. And so the red is with the weighted regression. The blue is with the unweighted. And you can see what's happening. My fifth data point is kind of extreme. It's, it's much larger uh, than the rest. And when I don't weight that lightly, when I just use equal weighting for all the data, my unweighted, that, that data point pulls the regression line way up. High leverage, high influence point. When I weight that final point, very lightly, and I weight the fourth point very heavily, and it pulls this regression line down, and that line goes almost directly through the fourth point because I weighted it so heavily, and has a big difference to the fifth data point because I've weighted that point so lightly. So that's all there is to it. It's very easy to do a weighted regression. However, you have to be a little bit careful to think about the residuals. We still have uh, lots of different ways of expressing and describing the residuals. First of all, the raw residuals. Well, the raw residuals are just the raw residuals, just like we've seen before. Uh, RESID, resid of model, gives us the raw residuals. But we can also extract the weighted residuals. And these are more useful than the raw residuals when trying to assess assumptions in our model. So weighted dot residuals of the model is this function that produces the weighted residuals. 
Weighted residual is the square root of the weight times the residual. You can also extract the internally studentized residuals and the externally studentized residuals just as before. And those residuals will make use of the weighting. In other words, the ISR and the ESR are based on the weighted residual. It is externally studentized residuals that we'll be using for almost everything, for all of our plotting, for our testing for normality, our looking for heteroscedasticity, uh, testing for outliers. Everything is done on the externally studentized residuals. And this, the normal way that we extract them with this S-T-U-D-R-E-S function, stud res function, that pulls out the externally studentized residuals. It does it properly when we have a weighted regression and we get the weighted studentized residuals, exactly what we want to use for doing all of our analysis. Uh, as a little test, I went ahead and annually calculated the internally studentized residuals. Uh, and then I compared them to the internally studentized residuals I get with this function STDRES of the model. Uh, so to do that, I first grab the standard error of the residuals out of the summary. So summary of model is a list of parameters. One of those parameters is called sigma. Sigma is the standard error of the residuals. So I can grab that and stick it into this variable. I can grab the hat values using the hat values function on the model. And then if I calculate internally studentized residuals manually, Using the weighted residuals, I can compare that answer, control R, to what I get when I just ask for the student internally studentized residuals directly. Ah, I see that I forgot to run these other functions up first. I didn't grab my residuals to begin with. Never mind. Let me start up here, that code, where I can grab all the residuals that I need. Then I'll run this code to calculate them manually so that I can compare them. Ah, now that makes a lot more sense. You gotta run your code for your code to work. So here's the ISR that comes directly out of the function. And then here's the ISR that I calculated manually using the weighted residuals. And you see all the numbers are identical as, as we'd expect. So that just confirmed what, what I already knew. The ISR function STDRES uses the weighted residuals and so should you that's our lecture this time starting next lecture we're going to talk about total regression till then